hello, peeps out there. Welcome, welcome to the Switch for Good podcast. I am Dotsie Bausch, and I am here with my lovely co-host, Alexandra Paul. And we're pretty pumped about today. I know we say that every time, but really, we are. Because <laughs> we got a, we great a, a cool well. chick on today. Um, we are uh, being joined by Charity Morgan. And I first got to meet Charity and her husband, Derek, uh, via the Game Changers film, which uh, I uh, am very honored to be a part of. And uh, I saw the film multiple times before uh, the producers put a whole piece on uh, Derek and Charity into the film. And uh, when I got to meet them, it was the first time that I got to see that, that new cut. And let me tell you, pow. It really is the piece that I think so many of the men who are our are, are, are main barriers, I'll say, into plant-based eating, or they have a d more difficult time than women um, understanding that uh, meat is a myth and you don't need meat to be strong and big and powerful and an amazing athlete. So uh, we're really excited for the world to see the Game Changers. And uh, they're just a lovely, lovely couple. And, and Charity is um, uh, a food foodie. She's a food diva. She's a food maniac, and she makes delicious, amazing food. But we're going to talk all about her career. Um, we may talk a little bit about Derek, but we mostly want to focus on charity. So that's right. Um, yeah, She's I want to hear more the about the research that you did on charity. Yeah. So uh, let me read what I've my her intro is that. Chef Charity Morgan holds a culinary degree from Le Cordon Bleu College of Culinary Arts. She's also a mother of two young kids and the wife of Titan linebacker Derek Morgan. Put those two things together and what do you have? Vegan lunches every day for over a dozen Titan football players, prepared by Chef Charity herself. There's a movement sweeping football to eat healthier, and Chef Charity is at the forefront of this wave. She is helping to slay the myth that you need meat to be big and strong. All the way from Nashville and currently in Los Angeles, let's welcome Chef Charity Morgan to the Hello, Charity. <laughs> Hi, ladies. How are you doing? <laughs> good. So good. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I don't know uh, very much, if anything, um, about you as little tiny Charity, growing up Charity. What did you... Where did you grow up? What did you eat? How did your parents raise you from a food perspective that, that helped you fall in love with food at a young age and grow into being a foodie? Because I know that food has been a part of your life for uh, many, many years. Um, but, but how did you grow up? So I grew up in a small town outside of Sacramento, California. Um, big family, um, six kids, my mom and my dad. My mom being a background um, of uh, Puerto Rican, and my dad is Creole, he's black French. And food has always been the center. I guess it became kind of a melting pot for us because being multicultural and, and my family having, you know, you know, being mixed, my mom also had a lot of friends that were of different backgrounds. She had an Indian friend, a Filipino friend. I mean, my mom was like, She's like the United Nations. She had friends of every background. And I would come home sometimes and literally see my Puerto Rican mother in the kitchen making roti, Indian flatbread from scratch. Oh. Her and her friends, like, and that was her thing. Like, she just loved food. She didn't care where it came from and what the background was. And I kind of adapted a lot of that. If you look on my page, it's not like... She makes American food. She makes Puerto Rican food. I make everything. <laughs> so that Puerto Rican and Creole food is a far cry from v the vegan food that you're making now. Am I correct? Very far. <laughs> I was raised with anything that a milk could, uh, a, a, a lactating cow could make. <laughs> um, I ate lots and lots of different meat and what's funny is my I was raised on a cat on a farm and I've seen as a little child cows being slaughtered so what started you to get interested in I mean going to Le Cordon Bleu and starting being a cook uh, and now being a vegan cook we'd like to kind of know a little bit about that journey so 
when I was growing up, I always loved to cook and I was my mom's shadow. I, I would do anything in the kitchen, whether she would just let me stir the pot or grade cheese. I was so just honored to be in the kitchen next to her. And I'm still trying to figure out, was that correlation? Did I like food or did I like just being next to my mother? Aww. And it just kept growing and growing. And when, you know, after school, when we would go to my friend's house, um, high school, every everyone would run in the kitchen like, there's nothing here to eat. And I would look in there and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, there's so much food. And I would just come up with these spreads from nothing. And I, it just kept growing as I got older. I would have to host all these parties at my house and I would cook. And then someone told me you should go to culinary school when I was, it was 22 years old. I, they told me culinary school is something that would be great for you. And I looked at them and said, what, what is culinary <laughs> school? What is that name? And then it just, uh, for me, I was such a country girl. I didn't realize that people actually got paid to cook and there was a school to further that. And I was just in this big, just state of shock that it was actually an entire field. And when I found out about it, I looked at, looked at whatever schools that was around the area, which at the time um, I lived in North Hollywood and it was Pasadena. There was a school called California School of Culinary Arts that did the Le Cordon Bleu program and I signed up for it and I never looked back. What did you think you were going to become before anyone said go to culinary school? Like, what were your interests? What, what were you into? I was modeling. Oh, was that makes sense. So uh, the, models don't usually get into food that much. <laughs> right. And the funny thing is when I found out about culinary arts, being a model at that time, it pushed me to culinary arts because I realized what real passion was and real passion that I had was food. It wasn't sitting behind a camera and people taking pictures of me. That was so boring to me. And at the time I had a slew of friends and I remember going to dinner one time and it was me and five girls and, and people would come up to us and go, Hey ladies, what are you guys doing? Just having conversations and around the table. It literally sound like this. I'm a model. I'm a model. I'm a model. I'm a model. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is not my life. Um, I've read that you – so you're, you're cooking all this amazing food, and you're, and you're putting French flares on it, which if I could think of one ethnicity or place in the world that might be the complete antithesis of a vegan, it's probably French. So you are, you know, cooking dense stuff, right, and it's gooey and syrupy and, 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 and very dairy-ish, um, milky, buttery, cheesy, and – you actually, correct me if I'm wrong, went vegan after Derek due to chronic health issues that you yes. were having. Is that correct? What I, I didn't know this before until I read up on you. What, what was going on with your health? So I thought that I was eating healthy just because I eat, you know, a lot of salads and I eat every, all my food is organic, mm -hmm. but I never looked at, you know, my whole plate of different cheeses and crackers and prepper jellies that I would have at a sitting <laughs> for a lunch was ever an alarm for unhealthy. Like I, I'm the girl that's like extra sour cream, extra cheese, extra, extra, any kind of extra dairy. And, but I did, I never drank milk. Weird. I've always drank soy almond milk since a baby because I had like some type of allergy as a child. But it never, this is how I, why I connect so well with people. We never correlate the things that are going on in our life to the, to, to health issues. Like, okay, I don't drink dairy, but the cheese that I eat is okay. That's how a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. I was one of them. So I have so much patience for people. And um, at that time, I did not have a digestive system. And what I mean by that, I could take hands, handfuls of laxatives, um, whatever would get my digestion going, I would take it. I remember once taking up to 15 pills and Derek looked at me like, I don't think you should do that. Mm. That that can cause any harm and, and so much harm. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, I'm like, Derek, this does nothing to me. I take all of them and still nothing happened. 
I went to every doctor. I went to uh, holistic doctors, naturopaths, I mean, applied kinesiologist, you name it. And no one could figure out what it was. They were like, oh, maybe you need to up your magnesium. Oh, you're missing a vitamin, blood work, all that. Everyone looked at me because I'm thin and exterior, I look totally fine. You're healthy. Nothing's wrong with you. And I'm like, listen, I can count down. There were times it was two weeks where I could not go to the bathroom. Oh, my God. Two weeks. And that is with taking handfuls of laxatives and all of that. And my body was just laughing at that. So at the time, I was struggling with that. And Derek was going plant-based. I'm making two meals. I'm making him his meals. And I'm making me and the kids something, which could be just seared chicken breast and vegetables or a sweet potato. It wasn't crazy, but keep in mind, I still have dairy in my diet. I'm drinking coffee with, you know, milk in it. Um, I'm still having all these issues. I go plant-based and I said, I tell Derek, I, I'm just going to try it. What, you know, it's not going to hurt. And I never intended to be plant-based. And I tell everybody <laughs> that from day one, I never in a million years said I would be plant-based. I went plant-based and I did it for a week and my digest, I literally was like waking up using the bathroom, like eating meals, drinking water, using the bathroom. And I'm like, Derek, like what's going on? My body is responding to this. And I realized I couldn't go back because my, what I made my body think is normal was not normal. And when I took all that dairy out of my diet and took all the meat out and I woke up with a burst of air energy every day, I said, wow, this is what God intended my body to feel like. Mm -hmm. What it was feeling like the other day or in the past, I was pushing through unhealthy. Here we are on the plant-based show talking about poop because we talk about it just comes <laughs> up because we poop well, a lot as and, vegans. And also a lot of people in America have issues with constipation. So I mean, yours is not a, 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 an unusual story, Charity. I'm not. sure you've heard a lot um, of people say the same thing. So you also, I read, gave up coffee because you had so much natural energy and you lost 20 pounds when you became yes. vegan. So I, I gave up coffee at the time and still now once in a while I'll go one week off, two weeks off, but I realized my issue with coffee and I don't do it for energy. I love the taste and the smell of it. So sometimes I'll just go and get a decaf. And um, the weight that I lost wasn't like, oh, I left, I lost fat. I lost inflammation. I went to my um, applied kinesiologist and she would like, she was filling on like just my stomach area and she's like, whoa, your kidneys aren't swollen anymore. And I'm like, what do you mean? She was like, all of your inflammation that I've been feeling in your body for the last three mil three years is gone. What are you doing different? And I forgot to tell her I went plant-based. I was just like, regular <sighs> routine, check. And I was like, oh, doctor, I, I forgot to tell you. I went plant-based. And she said, she just had this look on her face, and she has this French accent. She <laughs> says, whatever you're doing, don't stop. Because your body has responded so well to it. And that that weight was actual inflammation in my body was just on fire everything was just swollen i think it's important to to bring up that um we know that 65 percent of the world's population cannot tolerate the milk from another species in this case cow's milk because of a couple of different reasons one is the lactase that we can't digest right or people have a full-blown allergy and it's it the, the percentages are very high um in some ethnicities 95 percent of asian 87 percent of people of african descent 76 percent of latinos those are really high so there's a lot of people running around or or cramping around with you know <laughs> runny nose waking up stopped up bloating constipation diarrhea all of these symptoms that they're using pills like you were to eliminate or try to help them you know go to the bathroom and this one change is fixing everything for so many people and it's it's easy to try. I mean, it is one of those things that you can do in one week or maybe even four or five days. Just give it a go right. and see if you feel better, right? It's not going to hurt you. Right. Absolutely. Right. And so why did your husband 
Derek Morgan go vegan? You said you mentioned he went plant based first. What was what yes. was his um, motivation for going plant based? So, um, I and I I love that I have an athlete um, here with me because she understands. I'm I'm not of an athlete uh, caliber, and this is Dotsie all day. These guys are, are are always looking at how to make themselves better. They're always putting into their bodies. And when I'm telling people like how to go plant based, I tell them don't look at athletes. Let me talk to you on a just a, a human standpoint because those guys don't count. They are so regimented and so disciplined. I look at Derek sometimes. I'm like. I'm so far from you, I, which is great <laughs> because I can talk to the normal people because Dotsy and Derek, they're not normal. <laughs> so they're constantly looking at ways to make their body better. How do they have a competitive edge against in the NFL? They're always looking to replace you. Always. It's they're looking sport. for someone younger and cheaper. Mm. So Derek is like, Oh, maybe one one year it's cryotherapy. The next year it's prolotherapy. And this year actually happened to be, um, I'm going to look into a nutritionist. And this nutritionist said, hey, have you ever thought about giving it meat and dairy? And he's like, you know what? That has crossed my mind because I do know that I'm lactose intolerant. I do know yeah. this. But I still, like, push through it if I want some ice cream and I'm just kill everybody in the house. Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that was his way of looking at it. And um, he decided that he was going to try it, him, just like me. It never was a long-term thing. But once you embark on this journey and you realize how you feel and what your body does and how it responds, you say, you just literally go, there's, there's no way I can go back. There's no way. So you started making meals. You first you you had meals for yourself and your kids, and then for Derek because you wanted to make sure he was getting he was following his his plant based lifestyle. But then you decided to just cook one set of meals for the household. How did you make that step to cooking then for dozens of other football players? It just uh, I was just doing what I do. Um, Derek, um, the NFL, a lot of teams, especially, I wouldn't stop. They are not thinking about nutrition. So I knew that when Derek said he wants to eat plant-based, I knew what that looked like at the facility. That was going to be them shoving him brown rice in a salad. Mm -hmm. He is not a salad guy. I mean, come on. Like, he is a massive body, tall, this way and that way. And he's not going <laughs> to sustain on just salads. And by far not being able to sustain himself on the field, pushing against other 300 pound athletes. So, so, said, so the right, restaurant there doesn't, the restaurant there doesn't support, didn't support at least any kind of plant-based. It, it just feeds a lot of meat with sides of vegetables and things. Okay. Yeah. They're just, they're just mass catering every day. They're not, they're not um, looking at certain diets and um, things are, organic they're not gm non-gmo they're just large quantities of food being cooked every day almost like cafeteria style mm -hmm. and they're not looking at the quality of the food and and what you're putting into your athletes in order to for guys to perform and we do know studies show that certain foods do help the mind and the body perform better but you know in the titans are a lower market now I have friends that are on the Patriots. Is it the same way for them? No. They're, I mean, especially when you have a plant-based quarterback, when you're in their facility, it's going to be a lot of those options. But at the Tennessee Titans, we didn't have that. So that evolved with, uh, involved me just going in the kitchen and just doing what I do. I never thought in a million years I would be cooking for athletes. So I was making Derek things that he liked. I would take sweet potatoes and black beans and make this like meat type um, concoction and wrap it into um, corn tortillas and make enchiladas and uh, lasagna. I made all of the things that he liked and I just made a cleaner version of it that's dairy free and meat free. I definitely want to dive into the food because now I'm getting hungry. But I, I, I've been on a couple of panels, obviously, with Derek and also with uh, Nimai Delgado. And they both say that the biggest change for them was when they dropped dairy. And then obviously Nimai's never had meat. So he just only dropped dairy when he went vegan <clears throat> as a bodybuilder. Um, 
And we, you know, not too long ago, six Dodgers went dairy-free. We've had Brian Turner, the bodybuilder, on, um, on our show. The biggest change for him was dairy-free. So getting the meat out is a, is a big step. But what have you learned from Derek and the team of why? And I, now I'm answering my own question. When I, if he's lactose intolerant, then that was a problem. But for his performance, why do you think that was that, the biggest step, the dairy part of his diet, taking it out? Well, you, you, you said those numbers. I mean, you stated those numbers and what people don't understand is that, um, um, the enzymes that we need to break down dairy, we don't have that. We Mm -hmm. don't produce that. We're not a calf. Calves have that enzyme in order to break that down in your body to, to store it and do what it has to do to give you energy. Um, and I have to give people that I love history. I really love history. So I give people, especially African Americans, I have to give them a little bit more history that um, Africa didn't have cows be, until colonization happened. Right. So that's why that number of um, African Americans and lactose is so high. Sure. Like you guys, we did not have that in our diet. It's foreign to us. Um, and we're forcing something that never should have been there. And what happens is your body is using all of its energy and everything it needs to be able to fix this. We know that it's not Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't belong in our body. So let's fix it. That's what um, our cells do. We go and we run to attack it to fix it. So all, and that's why a lot of, you know, people in our culture, and in our community, we, we call it itis. When you get sleepy because your body, um, you, you eat these heavy meals. But I, I found that the common um, statement that a lot of these guys are saying is when they started eating my meals, they stopped getting the itis. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, because your body's not working overtime to break down all this dairy and all this meat. Now your body is using clean fuel to go out on the field and do what you have to do. I had guys in their 11th year in the NFL, which is already an anomaly in the NFL, 11 years in the NFL. And he literally said, I felt like I was 19 years old on the field when I started eating her meals. Wow. Wow. I'm sure you've had, yeah. What about, what about, um, weight, maintaining weight, which is a big issue or even, I think a lot of football players might want to gain weight. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of pushback about that. Like, how can you feed Absolutely. them enough calories? Mm-hmm. Tell us about how you dealt with that. So and- I feed the guys like I, I, I get a, I collect data on my guys and uh, you have to understand how your guys eat. Um, when guys would come tell me, I'll never eat plant-based. I got to the NFL eating meat and I'm going to continue to eat meat. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and those are the guys that usually came to me when they seen all of these guys performing so high at a high level when they was camp and they had to work out and do practices three times a day. And they're working out pretty much from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And they're looking at the guys that are plant-based, like they're going to fail. They're going to pass out on the field and Derek had way more energy than them. That's when those guys were like, okay, can you <laughs> What's um, going on? ask your wife, can I be on? And so the collecting that data looked like this. I would ask them, give me your top three to five meals that you love to eat. And mostly, and that was me trying to figure out, are they heavy eaters? Are they, um, do they like to eat lean? And what are their favorite flavors? Do they like spicy? Do they like Italian, soul food, whatever that is. And what I would do is I would take those meals. I would go veganize them for them. And I'm like, here's your meal. First meal's on me. You don't pay anything. If you don't like it, part ways, I still love you. But, and if you do like it, then, you know, you jump on my meal plan and you do things my way. (laughs) So that happened. And no one guy, not one guy came back to me and said, I don't want to be on your meal plan. Mm -hmm. I got feedback of this is better than I once thought I liked. This is amazing. And it was juicy really calorie dense meals if you look on my instagram it's not these little tiny bowls it's like these guys are eating huge portions they're eating chicken and waffles and you know mac and cheese and i always included some kind of greens whether it's sauteed as kale or massage kale salad and green smoothies 
um, they got all that. So they never, ever was lacking calories. If yeah. anything, they probably had more than enough. I actually read that one of your one of your players said, um, could you please give me a little less food, please? Because I can't eat all. <laughs> Not that he, he loved it all, but he couldn't eat it all. So. And he's raised in a household where you just don't waste food, which uh-huh. I do understand that as one of six kids. Um, we just didn't waste food. Like mm-hmm. you pass it down to one of your brothers and sisters, but you are not throwing that in the trash can. And he told me that story. He said, yeah, we, I was just raised to where we didn't raise food. We didn't waste food. And this is one of, this is Jarrell Casey, my 300 pound D tackle who's telling me this. And I'm sitting there like, you mean you can't eat a double beyond meat burger? He's like, charity, please. I, he was like, damn near crying when he said, I need a single, please. I feel so (laughs) horrible. I'm literally wasting it or I'm giving it away to someone like I need a half. And I was like, okay. Oh my God. What about when they travel? Uh, What, what, what do they stay on a a vegan diet or do you somehow get the food to them? So the good thing with the NFL, it's, it's, they're a turnaround. They're, they're never gone for like 48 more than you know, a day, and they're not weeks on the road like the NBA. So I would always uh, prepare them by sending them a travel meal, and that could be as simple as a buffalo chicken wrap and a lentil salad and a plant-based smoothie, something that they could have and crack open later on. Um, And I would also give them a lot of information. Okay, you guys are traveling to New York. This is plant-based restaurants that are around the area. Derek loved post-mating because he loved staying in his room. And I kind of did that because I wanted them to feel I'm not micromanaging them. If they wanted to go and eat a piece of meat that day, it was up to them. Because no matter what I said or what I did, they were going to do what they wanted to do anyways. So I just wanted them to feel like I'm not micromanaging them because these are adults. They are adults and they're millionaires. So they can eat whatever they wanted. And so for me to give them that freedom, let them cling on to me closer instead of make them like kind of drifting from me. It's funny how men work, isn't it? (laughs) It's across the board like that, isn't it? (laughs) I read that What the Health was a documentary that had an effect on a lot of the players. Um, Now, of course, it's exciting to hear that the the documentary that y'all are in, Game Changers, is also going to uh, affect a lot of of other, more players. Um, What was, so were most of these um, players going plant-based because of performance or because they were recognizing that they weren't aging as healthily as they could? Mm-hmm. Did they have other issues, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, over, over fat? What? When you're dealing with guys that are in their 20s, I mean, I only had two guys that were 30. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, they're not looking at health. I'm, I, I have to tell people I, I'm dealing with a different kind of guy. Um, that's why I don't I, I don't use the word vegan with them. I use plant based because uh, I'm not here to terrify anyone and people. To, oh, so what do you mean? Like just because I'm eating your meals, I can't wear my Jordans anymore. That's when I would lose people. So I have to tell people there's it's a fine art to this. You're not only dealing with guys that are 20 years old and they're at the peak of their career, Mm -hmm. but they're also overnight millionaires. So you're dealing with that kind of tug of war of, I can eat whatever I want to eat. I can hire whatever chef I want to hire. So for Mm -hmm. them, it had to be performance and and constantly putting it to their self because outside of that, they didn't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they'll be glad when they're in their late 30s, that's for sure, right? Yeah, I mean, Derek, at the time when he was, um, when I met Derek, he was uh, 21 and he had high blood pressure. Oh, wow. So, yeah, high blood pressure at 21. I'm, you know, I remember when I was pregnant and he would always say, I have high blood pressure. And I looked at my midwife and I said, take his blood pressure because I'm tired of hearing this, of him having high blood pressure. I know that's BS, but let's just prove it. So I'm right once and for all. And she took his blood pressure and she's like, wow, like you're fit, you're healthy. I can't, you really are. And it was just something that was hereditary, right? So Derek, before he um, was plant-based, he, as being in the NFL, you take physicals and he did all this blood work. And um, six months after he was plant-based, took his blood work again. And blood pressure completely gone. 
high yeah. cholesterol levels completely gone inflammation markers completely like they just plummet to where they're not even on his charts anymore so mm -hmm. that was his biggest sign of why he shows people why he sticks to it wow. what's it like making such enormous vats of food like the scene in the game changers i mean it looked really good but i was more overwhelmed by the fact that you produced that trough yeah. of troughs <laughs> plural of food it, and this is every day do you have a whole day. staff because i didn't see a staff in the film this is it's kind of blows is it, my mind. You, is it in your own kitchen it is because i did um i, I renovated my kitchen to a commercial kitchen i ah. did ah smart so I looked at commercial kitchens and my kitchen was way better, more, more, way more high tech, more space. I have it in my, um, the center of my kitchen, I have an island that's 100 inches by 100 inches. <laughs> that's Massive. bigger than my bedroom, I think. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really large. I don't know. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So how is it? Do you wake up early in the morning? What time, what time do you need to get yeah. this food out? So it's, it comes with preparation. So I'll start a meal like a menu for the week. Um, and usually I used to send it to the guys. Here's your menu for the week. And then I would drop it in a group message where it was all of the guys who were on the meal plan. And whenever someone will add to the meal plan, Derek would just add them to that group message and I'll just drop it in there. And the cool thing about my, um, my, this chat that happened, I would always, always leave it open for suggestions. So guys was literally at eight o'clock at night. Hey, have you ever thought about veganizing gumbo and like all these like <laughs> random meals? So I always got my inspiration from them. So I would start that way from gathering what they wanted, putting out a menu, drop it in, in the meal in the group chat, and then do it itemizing my grocery list and then waking up at six in the morning. The night before, I would soak my cashews or my beans or whatever, my lentils and whatever that needed to be soaked or make my, you know, my cashew ricotta because it's always better the next day and just sit it in the refrigerator and then just wake up in the morning and everything was fresh. And I would do this with either one assistant or sometimes two during camp. I needed hands down two, sometimes three because it was just way too many meals going out, three meals going out in one day, all fresh. So the Three guys meals never per, had, per player. Per player. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So that's a, a, a lunch, a dinner, and a snack, and a protein shake. And those protein shakes always had um, some type of superfood in it, whether it was moringa, um, ashwanga, um, bao bao, which is good for electrolytes, and um, maca, which was mm -hmm. good for energy yeah. and just... So many different things, uh, or a uh, matcha green tea. I want it to replenish your body some way, shape, or form because during camp, it's, your body's being constantly depleted and broken down every second of the day. So um, it just happened with just the, these me and three girls at the most for um, camp, and it's just making sure that guys had fresh meals. And most of the time, guys didn't even have to warm up their food because it was just so fresh out the kitchen and delivered directly to them. But because of the large quantities of food, I would give them these huge containers of food. What some guys would do, they'll eat half for lunch and they'll save the other half for dinner and they'll kind of like rotate their meals. And um, they just rotate it however way or split it with their wives. It was so cute. So many wives would text me and go, I just love that my husband's on your real plan because I get to experience all these amazing plant-based dishes and I just can't wait for you to open up a restaurant. So it was just, it's fun. It really is. That was what I was wondering is these families of these players. Cause I can only imagine at home, you know, the guys are coming. It's like charity, this charity, that food, this vegan, that plant-based, this. And the wives are like, all right, who is this charity? What is going on with your plate? So have they, have some of these families and some of these wives that are cooking or maybe the, the, the guys cooking adopted your way yes. of eating? Yes. The wives are actually your, your, your biggest, um, they're your biggest cheerleaders because I, for me, I didn't like to deal with the guys because again, we're dealing with 20 year yeah. old successful men. <laughs> Guy, they have so much on their plate. The last thing they care about is their, their meal. I would literally give them options. Okay. Thursday's burger day. Do you want a bacon burger, a truffle burger, a Buffalo burger, 
I mean, A, B, and C. And all they would have to do is reply B, C, <laughs> um, in and out burger, like whatever they wanted. And I, the night before crickets, and I'm like, okay, Diller's choice. There you go. <laughs> because they have so much on their plates. And I decided that the more wives that I dealt with or the girlfriends, the easier my life would be. And the, wi- the wives started asking. And then the wives were like, hey, can I get on? And can you send my husband two of everything? Because I want to eat the meals. So when you get the wives involved, you get the player involved because who goes grocery shopping? Yeah. It's not the players. Mm-hmm. The the wives are going to be the ones that's going to switch out the milk to the almond milk. The wives are going to be the one that's going to replace all of those, you know, snacks to be, you know, some healthy plant-based snacks. So I love dealing with the wives. And what do you, it sounds like what your, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, your uh, secret weapon to to veganize people is to veganize meals they love. Is that what you recommend when someone says, I want to go plant-based? How do you recommend they start? I tell them to start with the things that they like to, to already cook and the, the things that they already like to eat. So if they, if they're, their thing is every Monday they make spaghettis and meatballs. Then I'm like, hey, let me show you another way you can do that. And you can, you don't have to take the flavor out. I'm showing people yeah. how to make an amazing bolognese with using, you know, reducing it, using your, your sauce and using red wine. And they're just like, oh, my gosh, my plant-based sauce now tastes way better than my meat sauce because mm-hmm. I just did my standard bell pepper, onions, and meat. But you're just showing me how to roast garlic and add some, you know, a nice Cabernet to this and this amazing flavors that are coming out. And they're just so shocked on what you can do with things that they already have in their kitchen. It's not like you're going to revamp your entire kitchen because you want to eat plant-based. I'm telling people, your kitchen is probably already 70% Mm -hmm. plant-based. You just don't know it. Like your Creole seasoning, go ahead, use it. It's plant-based. It's not no dairy or meat in it. And I found that most of my journey is just educating people on what is, is in their food, teaching them how to read labels and what's in their kitchen and how they really like to eat. Some people don't really know how they like to eat. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, I'd love to ask about <clears throat> your meal prep tips because I am your typical athlete where I, I've always been this way and I still am this way. And it's like, come on dots. You can plan better now at retired, but I would always wait until I was hungry, which is super dangerous if you're an athlete, right? Because then you're hangry and it's a whole thing. And I have an athlete husband, so it just two hangries, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> so we would, it would be like, okay, we're hungry for dinner. And then basically you need to have it in 10 to 15 minutes because you're hangry. And so then I just put together, you know, just, it's just a random, it's still fine, but it's not as delicious as what you're doing. So help people like me have better meal prep. So what are the tips for meal prep that you would say, okay, Dotsie, do this, this, and this, because that seems like the critical part where then I could make something in 10 minutes because it's already prepped in the fridge. So I I tell people setting aside two hours a week, not, not in one day, two hours a week for your meal prepping could save you an entire week. So I say two hours because I'll give, like for me, I'm very intricate. So for some people, it might take you Dotsy because you're, you're so regimented and you're so straight to the point. It would probably take you 30 minutes to do what I do in an hour. So you would write down Monday and I do this. I do Monday through Friday, everything I'm going to cook for that week. I leave Saturday and Sunday open for a, figure it out day and order day. Uh, okay. So let's be, and I'm, this is for my families because I'm just realistic and most, most families want, you know, pizza night on Friday or, you know, they just want to go out to, to dinner, whatever that is. So Monday through Friday, that's five meals that you have to come up with for dinner. Write it down. What does that look like? Again, Monday, spaghetti and meatballs, spaghetti and meatballs. Tuesday could be taco day. Wednesday could be a lasagna day. Um, Thursday could be a stir fry. And then let's just say um, Friday is um, some, some red beans and rice, as an example, or chicken and waffles, your more fun meal. <laughs> if you write those things down, 
so you already know your brain already knows what you're going to make then you spend an hour let's just say monday whatever that open one hour window you have to go and get everything for your meal prep okay. maybe it's a sunday you go buy everything for the week and so when you go into the kitchen on monday and you're making spaghetti and meatballs this is how i cook because i'm a creative cook i can make those uh, meatballs and spaghetti and meatballs different every Monday because I have all my ingredients, but then this time I want to add sweet potato to it or I want to make the meatballs out of lentils. And it, my creativity kind of evolves around those parameters of what I'm going to be cooking. Okay. That's okay. very good advice. And what about batch cooking? Do you recommend that sometimes people have a meal where they cook it on the weekend for the week that they can just go to if they like soups or stews yes. or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Absolutely. Or so check. that's for my athletes. So that's for my moms who want, or, or maybe, you know, work a small, you know, a nine to five and they come home and they make their dinners or your stay at home mom. This is how you cook for my athletes. I tell them start off in the beginning of the week and you make two grains three grains and you separate those into the, your bowls and now what you do is you make a slew of vegetables you roast mm -hmm. them and you make these bowls because they're going to keep well you don't want things that aren't going to keep well you want things that you can eat cold and you can eat hot and i Dotsie, you probably remember me saying this sometimes i would make Derek the same bowl for five five days five days same bowl but what i will do is one one would have quinoa one would have brown rice and i would switch it up one would have you know sauteed kale and the other would have you know some raw kale and the difference with these bowls it will have tons of chickpeas whether i roasted it or roasted them or just put them in as um um just boiled uh chickpeas whatever vegetables i always added hemp seeds and avocado for healthy fats and um and then you do different Wrong. sauces. That's what and I learned I from you because that's what I'm doing. Because yes. it changes the whole flavor. It's like you have a marinara sauce or you have a Thai sauce or yes. you might have like a Mexican type of like salsa sauce and it changes the whole bowl. Yes, it's, And it's so easy. It's so easy. And she just named like some easy ones that everybody has on deck at all times. If you're not like me, you don't like to make all your vinaigrettes fresh and make all these different sauces. You can put a salsa, a marinara, a quick buffalo sauce, a chimichurri sauce, a pesto sauce, and mm -hmm. it completely changes to where your brain, I mean, think about it. Our correlation between food and humans is nothing more but a, it, it, it's, a it's a brain thing. And I have to tell people, mm -hmm. it's a neurological disorder that we have with food. <laughs> and once we change that, then we go, oh, I can do that. If your brain is saying, oh, this is good and this is different from yesterday, then your body's saying, I could do this. And that's kind of the, the correlation of what I have with food. People never feel like they're eating plant-based because it looks, it smells, and it tastes like everything that they, that they always have. So uh, one last question before we go, unless you have something, but I wanted to know overall looking at football today or even maybe major league sports, if you feel like you can talk to that, is there a change going on where uh, now the cafeterias are moving towards better plant-based options for players or do you still see it as a very meat centric sport or uh, culture in terms of professional sports? No, I'm completely optimistic, and I know from just being in this space that people are changing because what drives the market? It's the athletes. Athletes drive the market. And maybe when it was just Derek alone by himself, they are like, yeah, whatever. But when you have 13 guys and then you're up to 17 guys that are like, look, I don't want this crap. Do you, can we have some better options? That's These are your these are your money makers. These are guys that are having the huge contracts you can't tell them no, because if they're saying that I perform better with this food, then you better go find whoever stops your cafeteria and go figure it out. And it took people like Derek and these guys to make that change. And I, that's why I tell, and I always congratulate Derek as, you know, not keeping this a secret because mm -hmm. it's been a secret. I mean, I know guys that have been plant-based and they were like yeah I've eaten plant-based when I was in the league but I kept it a secret because I didn't want guys to you know tease me on how I ate or or Tom Brady he's been plant-based for God knows how long 
but he waited up until last year to tell people what his competitive edge was. And I'm just like, it, we need more guys like you that mm -hmm. are open and telling people of how you're eating and what's changing your performance so that we could sway the market. And, and, and sadly enough, that consumers are doing what athletes are doing. So it doesn't only change in-house, it changes outside of the stadiums. It changes mm -hmm. outside of the football field, what guys want to do, what these athletes are doing as well. Yeah, and emulate. We know you have to get your biscuits up to Malibu, so we're going to let you go because we could talk so much longer, I feel like. But will you do me a favor? Will you send me the, your cashew ricotta recipe so we can put that in the show notes? Because as you know, cheese is like everyone's barrier, and it blows people's minds that you can make at home these cheeses that just are, are so much better than dairy cheeses oh, flavor-wise. Okay, I'd love, we'll put yes, that in the show notes, guys. Stuff shells with it. You can. Mm -hmm. I even use it when I make my um, uh, make a uh, like a your lasagna. You can make so much stuff with it, and you can sweeten it and make my a more of a dessert. It's, oh my gosh! It's so many things you can do with it. So everybody can can look at the beautiful food that Chef Charity makes on her Instagram, which is at Chef Charity Morgan. And then you've also got a a website too, which is chefcharitymorgan.com is that right yes yeah mm -hmm. and you've also got some recipes and tips on there and some great articles about uh charity herself and what she's doing to revolutionize uh football players health really so thank you so much because it is much bigger than that too because you're right americans and people across the yeah country, especially yeah. men who as dazi said need to go plant-based they're they're more resistant. they're following the athletes yeah, they're, though they're really gonna they are yeah, i they get are. those messages every day like i i have a, women that email me and they're like i've been vegan for five years but my husband's not and it wasn't until they read your article about your husband that they decided that they want to try it. and that to me is just like you have no idea how warm and fuzzy i get yeah. when i get those messages <laughs> nice work sister really awesome thank you so, so cool much. to have you drive safe all right thank you Dotsie. Thank bye you. Bye. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.